think when you talk about implementing any kind of uh, change or some policy, you need to make sure that what you're doing is not going to be more expensive making changes than what the past has been. You want to make sure that it's going to have some benefit, especially in the days that we have right now with health economics being so expensive and not just the United States, but I think all over the world when it comes to the amount of money that's put into treating patients for different diseases, whether it be allergy or, or other diseases. When you look at the allergy standpoint, which is where I come from, being an allergist, we're seeing such a global increase in allergies. Um, if we can somehow prevent that from happening, but do it so in a cost-effective way, then you benefit both society and, and the patients themselves. So the studies that have been out right now have really looked at if you can use a hydrolyzed formula in a way uh, to prevent allergy, but make sure it's not going to be more expensive to a family versus using some standard infant formula, then that's the first step to see from a cost-effective way is it going to work. Um, and the studies right now have shown in multiple countries in Europe, multiple studies showing that just preventing uh, a patient from having atopic dermatitis or eczema can save up to thousands of dollars uh, over uh, the annual basis and in lifetime for patients. And then a study that came out in the United States was looking at a, a what we call a mathematical model. It wasn't, uh, it was using different implementations from uh, several studies and expert opinion and saying, if we use the hydrolyzed formula over a standard infant formula, how much money do we save? And it was almost $500 per patient, but more from a global perspective, it was the patients that were at high risk, you save almost $350 million a year. But even in patients, you could argue that most patients really are at risk, I think, now for allergic diseases because we're seeing more and more families without allergies. In that population that wasn't even at high risk, it prevented almost $400 million uh, due to preventing eczema. So three quarters of a billion dollars a year can be saved if we can prevent some allergic disease. And that doesn't even count for what happens down the road. If you can prevent atopic dermatitis, which is the first step we think in the allergic march for most patients, can you then prevent food allergy? Can you then prevent asthma and then seasonal allergies? And we know those are very expensive as well. Billions of dollars uh, for food allergy alone can be up to $25 billion a year spent by f families total uh, in the U.S. based on a study um, on food, extra food, clothes, shopping, things like that, change of the lifestyles uh, for medications and going out, things like that. So it's quite expensive. If you can break that first step, can you actually prevent even multiple steps afterwards. What we're talking about is patients who can't be exclusively breastfed for the first four to six months of life because again, breastfeeding we feel like everyone agrees is the best, but if you can't exclusively breastfeed, then using a hydrolyzed formula, uh, either partially or some data with extensively hydrolyzed, may prevent uh, allergic diseases, especially atopic dermatitis. Thank you.